What's up guys, this is Lakeup here. We are back with yet another trove video on the channel and today you might be wondering Lakeup, why are you doing another gunslinger build video? Um, And I guess I just wanted to say that well, I'd say the past gunslinger build video that we had on the channel was inaccurate it had a bit of misinformation and I guess this video we're gonna clear all of those misinformation up and we're gonna fix you guys with better builds than what we shown in the other video. So as you can see right here my gunslinger is currently at 35.3k power rank and we're going to be talking about the best gems, I guess the best gear stats, we're going to be talking about the best rings, foods, allies and stuff like that. So yeah without further ado let's begin with the video. Alright so first thing is off right, um, if you're using a gunslinger let's say you don't need magic fine. Alright, um, I'm just gonna say that you don't need magic find because I guess Gunslinger is going to solely be focusing on boss kills. I mean, you're not going to be exactly farming with the Gunslinger. So I'd say you probably don't want any magic find um, stuff on your gears. Unless, let's say Gunslinger is your main class and you're working towards building your classes and you want to get more crystal drops in, um, let's say, Uber 10 top side for more chances at being able to obtain crystal 2s and crystal 3s, then I mean, by all means, feel free to add magic finds to your gears. However, I guess if you're not maining the Gunslinger, I'd say you should be trying to, you know, put other stats instead of magic find on your gears. I mean, you don't really need magic find if you're not using your class to farm in it. Starting off with the gears. Alright, we've got some Crystal Force, we've got the Max right here, so for the hats, of course, we've got Attack Speed and Critical Damage. These two are going to be the main ones that you should already have. If you don't have them, then please do get them on your gears because Attack Speed will be needed in order to attack more quicker and for you to deal or dish out more damage. I mean, it's common sense, right? More Attack Speed, more shots, more damage. And for the fourth stat on this, I maximum health. Some may argue that, okay, dude, why do you need maximum health? But for me, Gunslinger is going to be a class used to kill bosses. So I would recommend that you use maximum health in order to make your class a little bit tankier because if you probably watched the other Leviathan video that we did yesterday, we were using the Elysian Bandolier, right? So there isn't much time for us to, you know, heal up. And let's say we accidentally miss a flask, we will literally just die, alright? So it's definitely something that you should use in order to, you know, just to be on the safe side. I, because, you know, you kind of overlook stuff at times, you know, you're killing bosses, you know, you're all the way up there, somehow you forget that you're losing your jumps, and so when you fall down, you forgot to pop a flask, and you're dead. Boom. Right, you don't want that happening, so you want to mitigate that as much as possible, so I would basically put maximum health on the force stat. I mean, you can literally change it up, if you want magic find, you can use magic find, if you want critical hit, if your critical hit's not at 100% yet, then feel free to use it. But anyways, I'd probably say that maximum health should be where it's at for the crystal hat. Moving on onto the weapon, of course, we've got attack speed, we've got jump and critical damage. Of course, you will need attack speed and critical damage at the same time. However, jump. Why jump? Well, in my opinion, I guess you need as many jumps as you should be getting. And you might be wondering, well, Latecom, why can't you just get jumps on the ring? Because I'd say that if you get jumps, I mean, you don't really need magic find anyways, right? So just putting jump on the ring or you know on the weapon it doesn't really make that big of a difference right because you know you could have let's say energy regeneration ring if you put the jumps on the weapon and i know that some of you guys out there you don't have enough jumps because you don't have dragons you don't have um you know you just don't have the stats right from those dragons and you know, it's hard for you guys out there if you don't have the necessary amount of jumps in order to get a good build for your Gunslinger because you probably might be struggling to stay on top of the Leviathan or the boss or whatever you're trying to kill, right? You know, you're shooting with this and, you know, you're trying to stay on top, but you don't have enough jumps, you fall all the way to the bottom and you've got to, you know, get all the way back up again, right? So. A lot of people might be arguing about the next stat that we're gonna use. Um, uh, let, let me skip the phase for now. I, um, P 
people might argue that, okay, you might not need energy regeneration because of the fact that you'll always be in the air. Well, that is going to be true to some certain extent, but I guess what can you use other than energy regeneration? I, there's choices between Magic Find, but as I've said earlier, if you're using Gunslinger, of course, you're only going to be using him for boss kills. So you don't really need Magic Find, all right? So that's probably out of the picture. Then the other ones, you could use a Jump Ring, of course. If you don't have the necessary amount of jumps, you can always use a Jump Ring on your class. However, I'd say it's going to be tough. Uh, it's definitely going to be a tough decision because when you're using your Gunslinger, you're trying to, you know, kill the boss, right? You're shooting at him. And, you know, you're trying to kill it and, you know, you, you go all the way down. Okay, you're going to recuperate a little bit more and, you know, you, you got to try to get that ultimate as much as possible, right? So you definitely don't want to stay on the ground that long, but I guess energy regeneration will be more of a quality of life for the gunslinger when it comes to killing the bosses. You don't have to stand on the ground as long as it should take. But some may argue that you could just use a Zealous Emblem instead of the Chronomatic, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. I, I wouldn't recommend that because you will definitely need a Chronomatic Emblem um, in order to get your shots done. I mean, you're not going to have an unlimited amount of time to use the ultimate, so it is definitely going to be really, really a tough one for you if you don't use the Chronomatic Emblem. So let's move on back to the face. Right, so what do we actually use? Of course, we will have attack speed, magic damage, and critical damage. No doubt about it, this will be the stats for your face because you will need magic damage in order to increase your coefficient as much as possible. Yes, yes, guys, I know I've got too much magic damage and too little critical damage, which is the reason why my coefficient is super low as of right now. I so, you know, don't really care too much about this as of right now. So let's move on onto the food. Of course, it's going to be free range electrolytic crystals, gives you lights and an extra jump and flask capacity. For the ally, of course, it is going to be Puck because it increases cooldown recovery speed by 25% and gives all those juicy, juicy stats. Moving on to the banner, we have got the Enshadowed Torch of the Hive, which gives us 900 lights, 500 magic damage, 5 flask capacity, and 10% attack speed, in which, as I've said earlier, attack speed will definitely help you in order to build a stronger class. So, looking at these emblems right here, as I said earlier, Chronomatic definitely is going to be one of the best, if not the best ones that you should be getting, because you will need to pop your flask a lot in order to, you know, get rid of that cooldown recovery speed as much as possible to cycle on to your next ultimate, right? So the next thing is definitely Arcane Emblem. I mean, whenever you pop a flask, you will increase your coefficient by, I guess, two times. 250%, I 2.5 times, excuse me about that. So you will definitely need this to deal more damage, at least for a shorter amount of time. And as you can see, coefficient increased for three seconds. And we're going to move on to the Flask Elysian Bandolier, of course. As I've said earlier, the more flask you have, the better. Because if you're using this, right... And if you're trying to, let's say, kill a Leviathan, then it's always good to get more flask because you will be able to use it and cycle through that ultimate as quick as possible. I, and don't forget to use that jump, all right? And I mean, if you're running out of jumps, then anyways, it doesn't really matter because you will always have this jump attribute to the Gunslinger that will make it a little bit better for him when he uses this jump. So speaking of jumps, um, if you're kind of skeptical about jumps and if you don't have that many, you can always just use this. I mean, you just use it and just shoot your opponents. All right? And you know, if you are running out of jumps, then of course, 59 jumps is where we're at right now. You can always use them on the weapon, you can always use them on the ring, whichever one that suits you the best, but I would recommend you to put it on the weapon and for the ring, just save it for energy regeneration. All right, so let's move on on to the gems, right? The last time I botched them up, I talked about Paradisk, I talked about so many other ridiculous gems that should not be on the Gunslinger. So let's head on over onto my Gunslinger build as of right now. Sadly, I do not have the so-called best of build as of right now, but I'm gonna just show you guys what I currently have on the Gunslinger, in which is going to be a little bit painful to show. All right, so of course, first things first, we've got the Overcharge Class Gem. If you don't have it, get it right now because it will allow you 
to deal more damage with the ultimate because without the class gem you're only going to be doing like shots like this I, you definitely don't want these kinds of shots right so if you're looking for the gunslinger's ultimate then boom class gem allows you to do this it will basically spread out your shots, right? It's gonna amplify your shots, not spread it out, um, mind you. So it's gonna allow you to deal more damage with the class gem. So you definitely will need the class gem. I, if you don't, if you don't have the class gem, <laughs> get it because without the class gem, the gunslinger is just yet another class. I, right? because the class gem is what makes it the best damage per second class in the game as of right now. So you will need the overcharge class gem. Now, moving on onto the next gem, there has been a lot of speculations about this, but I guess I have found out that the Stinging Curse is going to be one of the best gems on the Gunslinger. Right? Because what this gem does is it will deal damage over time effects to enemies. So basically, if you're focusing on an enemy like a Leviathan, you're trying to kill him. So it will definitely be reasonable enough for you to use the Stinging Curse gem because it will allow you to deal damage over time to the enemies. So it's going to be a really, really good gem to use against one solo single target. And I would recommend you guys to get this gem as well. I mean, you could probably use a couple of other gems, but they won't be as effective, I guess. Well, let's move on, on to the other gem right here. We've got none other than the Berserk Battler. Okay, so what this Berserk Battler gem does is that it increases your light. Let's say you're attacking an enemy, you're going to need additional light if it's a Leviathan or it's in Delves, right? So you will be able to receive two different types of light increases in your stats. One is going to be 250 additional lights, which is the first tier of this Berserk Battler gem. And the second tier, which is going to be a 750 increase in light, which is going to be the second tier, and which is going to be the maximum amount of light that you will be able to obtain when using the Berserk Battler. Although it does not activate all the time, it will be a really, really good way to deal or dish out more damage because the more light you have, the more damage you will deal, right? So it is definitely beneficial for you to use the Berserk Battler. Although a problem with the Berserk Battler with the attack speed is that when you're using your ultimate, you're going to lose that attack speed. So it will kind of cancel out, if not be a little bit worse with the attack speeds on the Gunslinger. But I guess you should always try to get you know, this gem because you will need the additional light, right? So you probably might have been wondering why I've not been talking about the um, water gem because this gem that I have right here, I would not recommend it to you guys out there, right? Simple as that. Why do you not use explosive epilogue? Because you shouldn't... There is a better gem, right? Because as you can see right here, explosive epilogue will cause enemies to explode when you kill them. And when you're at a Leviathan, mind you, it's not gonna be that simple, I. Right? So, you know, there's nothing to kill there. So, I would recommend you guys to switch this over to a different gem because Explosive Epilogue, useless on Gunslinger on one-on-one -on -one boss fights. All right, that's the point. So, if you've got Explosive Epilogue, just yeet it out of your inventory, you just get a better gem. Let's switch on over to, let's say, my um, Tomb Razor, all right? Let's talk about the Cubic Curtain gem. What this Cubic Curtain gem does is that if you avoid damage, let's say you dodge, right, like a shot from the enemies and you just don't get damage dealt on you, then it will give you a protective shield and it will absorb the next attack from the boss, right, maybe a Leviathan, a Delph boss or anything, and it will stun the attacker. I'm not really entirely sure whether this works on bosses because stuff like the Ice Age abilities does not stun the Leviathan as well. So I probably have a little bit of doubts about the stunning part, but it is definitely a better gem to use in comparison to the explosive epilogue in which we have got on the Gunslinger right here. So I would recommend you guys to switch this explosive epilogue onto the cubic curtain. So at the end of the day, I would recommend you guys to use, of course, Claw Shem, that's a given. Berserk Battler, that's a given as well. Stinging Curse, it's a really, really good gem, so you should try to get it as much as possible. And get rid of the explosive epilogue. Put on some cubic curtains, boys. And if you probably haven't seen me talk about the subclass, of course, it will be none other than the Knight, because it will increase your flask capacity by six. 
and which is going to be something that you will really need. The more flasks, the better. I, I guess that's probably going to be about it. I've still got some things to work on the Gunslinger as of right now. We've got 108% critical hit in which I could remove one of those critical hit stats on the gems and switch it over to maximum health because it will definitely help me out. I, as I said earlier, I guess you will need a decent amount of chunky health in order to use the Elysian Bandolier when killing Delph bosses and when killing other bosses as well, because without the Elysian Bandolier, I, you're not gonna get the most bang of your buck from the um, ultimate that you're gonna be using because you will need as much refills as possible. So I guess that's probably gonna be about it. I hope I didn't actually miss out anything in this build video. If I did, feel free to leave it down in the comments below because, you know, I usually do miss out a couple of things here and there. But I guess that's probably going to be it for this video. I'm going to be working on the Gunslinger and we will be able to get that max gunslinger in order to solo uber 10 leviathans i don't know but probably i will try this gunslinger build as of right now to solo a uber 8 leviathan and see how it stacks up against the ice age all right so i guess that's going to be it for this video guys thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you guys in the next video and as usual peace out